The best way to describe a lightship is a floating lighthouse. Lightships were used in areas where it wasn't possible for a lighthouse to be built, due to it being too costly, impractical, or too deep. A lightship displays a light, as well as in some areas, sounds a fog signal and radio beacon. The Huron Lightship began its service when it was launched in 1920 for the United States Lighthouse Service as Lightship 103. Later, she was redesignated as U.S. Coast Guard WAL-526, then WLV-526. She was stationed on various shores on Lake Michigan. For 35 years, from 1935 until 1970, the lightship spent her time on the southern end of Lake Huron, about six miles north of the Blue Water Bridge and three miles east of the Michigan shoreline, guiding ships through the narrow channel leading to the St. Clair River. During her years of service, 21 other lightships operated on the Great Lakes, but in 1970, when she was retired from active service, she was the only lightship remaining. She was also the only lightship to keep her station throughout World War II. Through the work of area residents, the city of Port Huron acquired the ship in 1972. Her home became the St. Clair River at Pine Grove Park, where she was enshrined as a memory of a lost era, as well as a tribute to her vigilance while in service. In 1990, the lightship received another honor that made her unique from other lightships on the Great Lakes. The Huron lightship was designated as a National Historic Landmark and was the only lightship to receive an honor such as this. There was one casualty connected with the lightship, prompting the Lightship Sailors Association in October 2000 to present the Huron Lightship Museum with a plaque honoring the fallen sailor, Seaman Robert Gullickson, who was 21 years old. In May 1958, three sailors boarded the Lightship's Liberty Boat to pick up mail, groceries, and paychecks at the Fort Gratiot Coast Guard Station in Port Huron. After making the six-mile journey, the sailors found out the groceries had not yet been delivered to the station, so two of the men were to return to the Lightship to deliver the mail and paychecks, while the third stayed back to wait for the groceries. Seaman Gullickson and Chef Vincent Dish set out for the lightship at 10.45 a.m., but were hit by a large wave that swamped their boat on the trip back. Gullickson tried to bail the water out of the boat, but it sank. The two men, in their life jackets, floated for 45 minutes, holding hands, talking, and blowing whistles to try to get the attention of a tugboat and a freighter that passed, but they were unsuccessful. The water temperature was a crisp 47 degrees. After another wave separated the two men, Gullickson tried to swim to the shore for help. At that point, hypothermia had already started to set in on the men. At noon, the lightship contacted the station to find out why the sailors had not returned to the ship, which prompted the station to immediately send out another boat to look for the men. At 1.07 p.m., that boat found Dish, semi-conscious and falling out of his life jacket, which would have caused him to plunge into the cold depths of Lake Huron. Dish survived, but Gullickson's body was never found. To honor the fallen sailor, who was the only crewman lost during those 35 years the lightship guided others to the St. Clair River, a memorial is set up on his bunk. For those members of the public that wish to honor the fallen sailor or the lightship, the Huron Lightship Museum is open several months of the year. To see specific days and hours, visit their website, www.phmuseum.org. Motor City Ghost Hunters, nothing scares us. We're from Detroit. 